It's time for another hand cannon PvP tier list. And we have a lot of them to rank. This could be a bit of a controversial list, so you better stick around until the end. Once again, we're dividing up the A tier into the A plus and A minus tiers to give us a little bit of extra room to differentiate them towards the top of the list. First up is the infamous Ace of Spades, Cade's signature hand cannon. This has been an insanely good one ever since it was first added to Destiny 2. You get a kill and reload, then you got 6 shots of Memento Mori. Now you're dealing extra damage until you run out of these super bolts or you swap weapons. And if you get another kill, you can refresh Mori and repeat the cycle all over again. Ace gets juiced up stats, a permanent radar, and a smooth reload animation. This one's an obvious S tier, but it is a little bit closer than you might think. Other hand cannons can match it for the stats, but Memento Mori ensures its top position up in the S tier. Ancient Gospel is the Garden of Salvation's 140 RPM hand cannon. It has really juicy perks and pretty good stats for being 140. Taking a quick look at the perks, Slideshot is an incredibly good choice in that third column. It'll give you a huge range boost on the first and potentially second shot when you're sliding or immediately after your slide. In the fourth column, Rangefinder is excellent to stretch out your effective range, and Swashbuckler can be nice for that 2 crit 1 body leniency after just getting a kill. Rocking a Solar Melee on any of the Solar 3.0 classes will easily give you Radiant and Swashbuckler at the same time, enabling you to get some juicy 2 taps. These are all awesome qualities for a 140 hand cannon, but I feel like it got power crept by some of the newer options out there. And I'll concede this tier list is going to be pretty harsh. Ancient Gospel is an older one and it doesn't have any intrinsic traits. Think about things like Soros Synergy or the Amalon Fluid Dynamics. And it also doesn't have particularly good stats compared to some of our newer 140s on the list. Finally, its aesthetic is absolutely horrible, at least for me. This thing is so thick, and not in a good way. It's really obstructive and it makes it harder to land shots. I'd say Ancient Gospel goes in the B tier. It has good stats and the 2 tap potential with Swashbuckler is really fun, but that does mean you're giving up Rangefinder. Annual Skate is a solar 140 RPM hand cannon and it's made by Suros, meaning it can get that clean aesthetic, but it's also an older one so it doesn't come with the Suros origin trait. I'm not even 100% sure if you can still get this thing anymore, it might be available from Banshee if he's selling it. Annual Skate is the only energy 140 that can roll Wellspring, so if you desperately need that ability energy I guess it could fit into a build. But otherwise, Annual Skate is just a very mediocre hand cannon. It comes with sights instead of barrels which means that it gets way less stat benefits. It can be pretty snappy with surplus, but it's nowhere near good enough for a high ranking on this tier list. We're going to put this one in the B tier, and it's really only saved from C tier by its unique perk pool. Next up is the Awestringer. This bad boy has been one of my favorite hand cannons ever since its introduction in Season of Opulence. It has such a clean aesthetic, and it feels really nice to use. Bungie decided to bring back the Awestringer last season as our first ever craftable 140 RPM hand cannon. The stats and perks are all around pretty decent, especially if you craft it with the enhanced variants of the perks. Aim assist isn't quite as good as some of the other stats, but it's nothing that a targeting mod can't fix. You can get up to about 35.5 meters of effective range with the maxed out god roll, although I would advise small bore instead of full bore to avoid that stability and handling penalty. Rangefinder seems like the go-to perk in that fourth column unless you want to go opening shot to easily land a cleanup after a sniper body shot. In the left column, your options are basically Eye of the Storm and potentially Air Assault. Eye of the Storm does exactly what it says on the perk description. It gives you more accuracy and better registration as your health gets lower in a duel. This perk alone makes it a fantastic dueling weapon. Finally, Air Assault is actually a returning perk and it now grants a plus 10 airborne effectiveness stat passively, and you can also get a larger benefit if you take damage similar to Eye of the Storm. Hand cannons are often played with more of an airborne playstyle, so Air Assault is actually not a bad pick here on the Awestringer. You can even combine this with Extended Mag to get more than 30 airborne effectiveness at all times if you don't mind that slower reload. To wrap things up, Ostringer is a great hand cannon, especially since it can be crafted for whatever role that you like best. I'll give it credit for this, and I'm going to rank it up in the A plus tier. Bottom Dollar is a Void 120 RPM hand cannon, which is off limits to basically all of us except for the few Gambit lovers out there. Adding insult to injury, it has 12 perks in each of the last two columns, making it much harder to get your desired god roll. But if you're up for the grind, how good is the Bottom Dollar? Well, it is a 120 RPM, and I think that has to be the starting point for our discussion. One of the most critical questions is whether 120s are actually better or worse than 140s. They generally come with worse reload speed, handling, stability, and aim assist, but they do come with substantially higher range and slightly higher damage output. The collective hive mind on Twitter was absolutely certain that 140 RPM hand cannons are the better pick, so it might come as a bit of a surprise to you, but I'm actually going to argue that depending on the situation, 120s can be the better choice. But to really maximize their power, you need to take peak shotting very seriously. Here's what my friend Kamikake said about using a hand cannon properly. If you can see me on screen before I get my damage in, I did something wrong. Now I'm not sure if I remember this quote exactly, but I want you to embrace this. If your opponent can see you next to cover before you shot them, you probably did something wrong. 
you need to get into the habit of challenging extremely tight angles, ideally even off angles, and also peeking in different unconventional ways. There's a lot to talk about here, so I'll be sharing some reasoning on 120s vs 140s a bit later. But let's bring this back to the bottom dollar. This hand cannon has an extremely clean sight aesthetic and it also comes with excellent base range. Rangefinder is there to extend your optimal range and explosive payload can partially mitigate the damage drop off. If you opt for the maximum range roll though, you're going to be sitting at a painfully low 18 stability. It's going to make your bottom dollar behave very badly when you get flinched and it's going to butcher your accuracy on your subsequent shots. So if you go with a more balanced approach with small bore and a stability masterwork instead, you still get more than 40 meters of optimal range with a decent 45 stability. I think the bottom dollar is really great overall and I'm going to put it up in the A plus tier. Up next is the Cantata. Shout out to all of my fellow music nerds out there who actually know what this means. Ever since the Witch Queen release, this hand cannon has been a member of the World Loot Pool. Until recently, it was painfully hard to get, which was a bummer because it's actually a really good weapon. Nowadays, we can focus our umbrals at the helm and specifically go for a Suros weapon with a 1 in 5 chance to get the Cantata. What makes the Cantata so attractive is that Suros origin trait. This increases the handling and reduces flinch for a short time after you reload. Cantata combines this with a great perk pool, a great aesthetic, and a potentially high range stat. It gets a base range of 46, which is decent by itself, but it can also roll barrel perks in accurate rounds, which makes it able to reach a full 81 range set. If we glance over at the perk pool, there's also a rangefinder to stretch this thing out to a range of more than 36 meters. I wouldn't even be too worried about that slightly lower stability, because the origin trait alone can deal with a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to flinch mitigation. If we keep looking at the perks, the left column has a lot of absolute bangers too. Eye of the Storm, as we've established on the Ostringer, is an excellent dueling perk, as it can help you land shots when your health gets lower in a duel. Rapid Hit is never a bad choice either, as it can help you with both stability and reload speed of the Cantata. And finally, there's also Hipfire Grip, which is a rare perk on 140 hand cannons. Long story short, the Cantata is a great weapon. I'm going to rank this one in the A plus tier. Next up is Criminal's Dagger, which is another 120 RPM hand cannon. And you know what time it is, it's time for another lesson on how to use hand cannons. Most of us love our hand cannons, because they're satisfying to use and nothing beats that feeling of landing 3 clean headshots and being rewarded with our optimal time to kill. As a community though, we often forget that hand cannons do have a very clear weakness. They have a bad total damage output, meaning that your lethality against multiple players or against players with healing, damage resistance, or overshields is pretty limited. They also have a somewhat mediocre kill time these days. Let's face it, the 0.87 second time to kill from landing 3 headshots on a 140 RPM hand cannon really isn't all that great these days compared to high impact pulse rifles and SMGs. Put bluntly, hand cannons lose a time to kill duel against basically every other weapon type in the entire game. And the 120 RPM hand cannons are even worse at this, which is why peak shotting is so important. The Criminal's Dagger though has a really nasty trick up its sleeve. This one can roll with Kill Clip, which completely changes the way you play. Without Kill Clip, Criminals would be probably C or even D tier. The stats and overall feel are pretty rough. Kill Clip though allows you to 2 tap all resiliences and this is a game changer. 120s are already one of the best peak shotting archetypes in the entire game. You may need to flip a mental switch though and go from calm and collected peak shotting to full monkey mode because almost nothing in the game can counter that incredible lethality of the half a second 2 tap time to kill. This alone saves Criminals from the C or D tier, but its poor stats landed in the B tier. Our next contestant is the highly unique 3 burst pulse rifle hand cannon hybrid called Crimson. This one's a streak machine, getting kills heals you and also getting a headshot kill makes your magazine fully reload. If you're playing against players who are worse than you, it can be very easy to feed off of the healing and get some massive multi kill streaks. But for higher level play, is the 3 burst damage model really that good? Well it depends. According to the massive breakdown weapon spreadsheet, Crimson does 30.5 damage per crit and 19 damage per body shot. In game, the tooltip tells us there's an RPM of 415 and here's it side by side with an adaptive pulse rifle which fires at 390. It's definitely pretty close. The DPS turns out to be somewhere around 200 which is substantially better than what we get with other hand cannon archetypes. That does mean that Crimson has a slight edge against other hand cannons if you're dueling someone with an overshield. If we play the clip side by side once again though, pay attention to how much delay there is between individual shots compared to the pulse rifle. Again, Crimson's time to kill is really nothing to write home about. Referencing the same spreadsheet, we'll see that it's 0.87 seconds for landing 6 crits in one body shot, so it's basically on par with 140s. Crimson does offer a lot more leniency than traditional hand cannons, and its softer recoil is very good for controller players. But with the large delay between shots, Crimson asks you to be in the open much longer than with a traditional hand cannon. This puts Crimson in kind of a tough position where it lacks the range of a pulse rifle or the peak shotting ability of a hand cannon. However, the instant healing and the potential instant reload makes it really viable in 1vx situations in particular. The real divide here though seems to be mostly centered around which input device you use. 
The stickiness on controller makes it a very popular choice, but the reticle gets obscured by the weapon model and maximum FOV, which really hurts the ease of use on mouse and keyboard. So for this entry, we're going to be splitting the rankings based on their input device. We'll put it in the A plus tier for controller players and down in the C tier for mouse and keyboard. Crisis Inverted is an ARC 140 RPM hand cannon which drops from the Crucible as a post-game reward. This is another one with those monster perk pools of 12 perks in each column and there's plenty to choose from. But before we get there, let's appreciate that Crisis Inverted is the only non-sunset Amalon hand cannon that we have access to. Amalon weapons come with the absolutely elite intrinsic perk Amalon Fluid Dynamics. Close to the top of the magazine, this perk gives you a huge amount of bonus stability and reload speed. It has a decent base range stat and it can roll with Rangefinder to really stretch out that effective range all the way out to about 35 meters. That's not quite best in slot, but it's still very good. Crisis Inverted has really high base handling and aim assist stats and it almost feels reminiscent of the 150 RPM lightweight hand cannons. And if you don't opt for pure max range, Crisis has plenty to offer. You can embrace that highly mobile and rapid playstyle with something like Elemental Capacitor on ARC subclasses. It's actually enough to get you straight up to 100 handling even with no other handling perks. And finally, remember how I said that hand cannons have a really bad damage output? Well, Crisis Inverted actually has a trick up its sleeve. There's Focus Fury in the right column and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite perks for Destiny 2. Just by landing half of your magazine as headshots, you get a free 20% damage bonus for 10 seconds. Admittedly, the 20% buff isn't quite enough to let you 2-tap, but it will enable a 2 headshot 1 body shot combo. You'll also have a much better time playing against healing spam or overshields. The caveat with Focus Fury is that your progress is reset anytime you sell your hand cannon or if you reload it. But there's a trick here on the left column perks that can come to the rescue. Crisis is one of the few hand cannons which has access to Demolitionist in the left column. Think about it, Demolitionist is also a reload perk. Whenever you toss your grenade, you'll get your magazine refilled, and since you're not doing it manually, you won't lose your progress towards Focus Fury. This makes that accuracy threshold so much easier to achieve. The other reload perk on the left which can achieve the same result is Shoot to Loot. This one's also really effective at vacuuming up all of your teammates' hard work. Anyways, to wrap things up, Crisis has so much going for it, and if you can learn to use it despite its slightly boxy weapon model, it's definitely at least an A- tier hand cannon. DFA is a returning Nightfall reward hand cannon. It's a 140 RPM in the kinetic slot, and honestly, for being an adept weapon, it's really not that great. It looks great, I'll give it that, but functionally, it's a different story. With max range, including an adept range mod, you're only getting about 33 meters of effective range, and at that point, you've completely butchered your other stats. I guess Perpetual Motion is nice to give you back some handling, but again, we can get much more handling on better hand cannons anyways. The intrinsic perk giving you chunks of health back on kill is nice, but it doesn't get rangefinder, and the only payload perk it has is time payload, which extends the already mediocre time to kill a little bit more. I used to love DFA when it was first introduced in year 1, but these days there are just so many better hand cannons out there. The highest that can place this thing now is the A- tier. Next up, we've got the hand cannon that I have the most kills with in the history of Destiny, the Dire Promise. This thing actually had two windows of time where it was the most meta hand cannon for the sweatiest PvP players out there. We used to pair this with the totally fair and balanced beloved sniper rifle to create an absolutely unstoppable loadout. It used to be a lightweight 150 RPM hand cannon, and as sunsetting got introduced, it swiftly replaced the spare rations. Nowadays though, it's a shell of its former glory. It got its lightweight privileges taken away, and even its aim assist got nerfed by Bungie. It rolls with scopes instead of barrels, and it can't get accurized around, so its range spectrum is going to be pretty limited. The saving grace in the range department though is that it can roll with both opening shot and rangefinder at the same time. It's a bit harder to justify picking this thing based on stats alone when options like the craftable Ostringer exist. But listen closely because I'm about to tell you the secret reason why you should perhaps still use the Dire Promise. It looks really good. I'm serious about that. I love the slim weapon model. It keeps your FOV really nice and open, which makes it very easy to see everything that's on your screen while you're landing those consecutive headshots. I'll give it a lot of credit for its ease of use and I'll still rank this one in the A- tier, which is probably a bit generous these days. Ariana's Vow is our only special ammo hand cannon. It fires at 90 RPM and has some crazy recoil. It does big chunks of damage, but it generally needs 2 shots to kill. You also get 2 shots per ammo pickup to make it easier to get that kill though, and it spawns with 4 shots, which is double that of a sniper rifle. Arianus is one of the best special weapons for that blinting playstyle. This is where you land a big chunk of damage with one weapon and then quickly switch over to the other one for a cleanup. It was made famous by an early Destiny 1 Crucible player. Historically, these playstyles were tough to counter. In the Destiny 2 world, it was infamous with the mind-numbingly degenerate combination of the Recluse and Mountaintop. Later on, it was more common with bow and hand cannon swapping, especially when animation cancelling the swap speed was still a thing to make it almost instantaneous. And this playstyle is still alive today with the Arianus Vow. In particular, the Hunter Exotic Lucky Pants makes the swap speed pretty fast. 
My friend Time also uses this strategy effectively by starting with a bow shot and then swapping to Ariana's for the cleanup kill. But are these blinting playstyles actually meta contenders? Well, that depends. The big problem with Ariana's is that it takes special ammo to shoot, but it doesn't one-shot. Since Empowering Refs got nerfed, the easiest way to one-shot doesn't even exist anymore. In general, this swapping playstyle suffers horribly from the bad cumulative damage output. It's good in terms of the burst damage output against a single player, but it can't really output a ton of total damage. So this playstyle is incredibly gimped whenever you don't have cover to peek shot from. And for this reason, Ariana's is going to go into the C tier. It's a viable playstyle with the right build, but it struggles against better players who know how to counter it. Ice Luna is a legendary hand cannon from Destiny 1, returning to us from the 30th anniversary expansion. It was my personal favorite hand cannon in D1, and I was so excited to see it come back into D2. It has unbelievably high stats across the board. It has both the highest base range and highest base stability stats of any hand cannon in Destiny 2. Now don't get too distracted by the base stats though. The Ice Luna rolls with sights instead of barrels, and it doesn't have access to accurate rounds, so you're not going to be able to get that stat total too high. Of course, you can go for max range with Rangefinder, and Ice Luna is going to serve you really well, but I think you can also go a different route. I would try Steady Hand instead of Sure Shot for the sight, and that's going to sacrifice about 1.3 meters of effective range for a massive stability and handling gain. You could go for something instead of Rangefinder in the third column, but I really don't think it's worth it. And the fourth column gives us a lot of options. Obviously, moving target is an elite choice, both for the aim assist and the extra strafing speed. Although, I do also like Kill Clip for the extra damage. It's not going to let you 2-tap, but it'll be a lot more lean to get the 3-tap. Finally, the IS Luna is our only 140 RPM hand cannon with headstone, which can be absolutely elite for some stasis-based builds. On paper, I think the IS Luna slightly edges out its cousin the Ostringer, but they're so close, I'm still going to put it in the A plus tier. Fatebringer is yet another Destiny 1 hand cannon returning to us in Destiny 2. The flavor text on the time loss variant reads, but where is your fate and who brings it to you? Well, your fate is the A plus tier, and what brings it to you is explosive payload with this much range. The Fatebringer delivers that explosive payload bullet at 140 RPM all the way out to 34 meters, even without rangefinder. In my opinion, this is indeed worthwhile, but to understand why, let's get back to our discussion of 140 vs 120 RPM hand cannons. The main argument for using a hand cannon, which is why they're also so good, is that they're one of the best weapon types in Destiny 2 for peak shotting. If you are under the impression that hand cannons are truly the best peak shotting weapons in Destiny 2, well, I've got news for you, they're not. Actually, bows are, which is probably why we hate them. The real strength of hand cannons comes from peak shotting combined with movement. Think about this, bows have a lengthy draw time, and while you're holding that draw, you're quite immobile. You can't run, you can't slide, you can't dash or dodge or do anything really while you're holding the draw. With the hand cannon though, all you need to do is press the fire button once, and then in that same instant, your shot is fired. This means you can use your entire movement kit to make sure you're both unpredictable and safe for as much of the duel as possible. If you're playing in a team, this means you need very little commitment to output a high amount of damage, and you can easily see this in top level scrim gameplay where most other weapon types are banned by agreement. You'll see players abuse their entire movement kit in combination with a well rolled hand cannon to get as much damage in as possible with as little danger as possible. Remember, the kill time of hand cannons is too slow to beat almost any other weapon type in Destiny 2. In essence, this is why many hand cannon mains hate pulse rifles, those just kill faster. Still, hand cannons remain at the top of the meta because what they do, no other weapon type can replace. Usually I'd say the 120 RPM hand cannons get more damage out at range, but for the Fatebringer I'd have to make an exception. Explosive payload combined with either opening shot or kill clip and that ridiculously long range bar can give it a lot of damage from really far away. And if you use something like Stompies, even with zero airborne accuracy, that splash damage can come really in clutch whenever you need to land a shot close to someone who's on the floor. The adaptive archetype means that you'll have better handling and better stability to pair with your damage output and you'll have a much easier time punishing those lower skilled players who don't respect cover. And with all this in mind, we're going to put the Fatebringer in the A plus tier. I think we've been looking at too many good hand cannons, so how about a bit of garbage for a change? In other words, we're looking at the Finite Impactor. This little thing gets the worst base range of all 140 RPM hand cannons, with sights instead of barrels and no accurized rounds. With Iron Reach, you'd get 81 total range, but that would tank the near worst in slot stability and picking Sure Shot would also destroy your handling. You remember the Cantata? It's a 140 RPM hand cannon in the same slot with the same origin trait, and most importantly, its max range roll of the Cantata also has the same 81 range, but with Rangefinder and very respectable stats. The Finite Impactor is, simply put, garbage. The only thing saving it is the 140 RPM archetype, so we're going to put this one down in the C tier. Frontier's Cry is a solar 180 RPM hand cannon from the Iron Banner. This archetype recently got buffed, and now it deals 60 damage per headshot and 40 damage per body shot. The precision frame also comes with an intrinsic benefit to the airborne effectiveness and a much smoother recoil pattern. Does this make any of them good? Well, unfortunately, no. 
This is due to the simple fact that at base you need 4 trigger pulls to get a kill. Remember how we talked about the importance of big damage output from far away? Well good players simply won't let you get that extra shot off. It's not just about the 1 second time to kill which is pretty high because 120 RPMs have that too, it's just that the damage comes out in these smaller chunks. This really gimps the peak shotting ability of 180s which as we've discussed is the main reason to use a hand cannon in higher levels of play. As a side note I really don't like the recoil pattern either. It might look predictable to you, but in my opinion it kicks it right up in your face and blocks the enemy's model, which makes it super hard to see what I'm looking at. For controller players this is less of a problem, but for mouse and keyboard it makes it really hard to land your shots. On the bright side, Frontier's Cry has a lot of qualities which do save it from the D tier. First of all, it gets Iron Reach. This makes sense because after all, 180 RPM hand cannons are the clear winners in terms of raw DPS. If you're playing against some gamers abusing damage resistance and overshields, a 180 RPM can burn through them much faster than the other archetypes. This doesn't really make the 180s good though, after all that's what pulse rifles are for. They can maintain that high damage output with very good peak shotting potential. Nonetheless, the Frontier's Cry can do pretty well, you just gotta use it with Kill Clip or some sort of a damage boost like Radiant. The 0.67 second time to kill for 3 headshots is very good because it's paired with consistency and versatility of a hand cannon. Conveniently, the Frontier's Cry is also solar, so Ember of Empyrean on any of the solar 3.0 subclasses can extend that Radiance even more when you get a kill. Since the Frontier's Cry is so reliant on a damage boost to be worth using, I'm going to put this one in the C tier. Let's talk about Hawkmoon. It's a 140 RPM hand cannon with some of the best stats in the entire game. Its base handling is extremely high and its base range is very good. With the Catalyst you'll get even more range and handling just for landing your headshots. And that isn't particularly hard to do either with a base 93 aim assist. Just one targeting mod gets your Hawkmoon all the way up to 100 aim assist. With really high base stability, great airborne stats, and fantastic random roll options, Hawkmoon in its base form is already an amazing hand cannon. If it didn't have anything else going for it, it would already be ranked at least in the A tier. But I haven't even yet mentioned its exotic perk. By landing headshots you get paracausal stacks which accumulate to buff the damage of your final bullet. 6 stacks is enough for a one shot headshot, 7 will get you a one shot body shot, or even a one shot against a super. The constant threat of you collecting more paracausal stacks and eventually one shotting your opponents is absolutely devastating in PvP. It forces your opponents to play quickly and it can potentially make them commit to really reckless plays. The cherry on top though is the fact that holster mods can actually reload Hawkmoon for you. This makes it so much easier to get that 2 tap or even the 1 tap with your paracausal stacks. And don't underestimate the power of a 2 tap either. Just because you can't land all 7 headshots doesn't mean the Hawkmoon's bad for you. A 2 tap clocks in at a time to kill of just under half a second. That's basically a deletion in PvP. All you need is 3 stacks and then 2 bolts left in the magazine to pull it off. This is pretty easy to do but also absolutely devastating. It's way more powerful than people give it credit for and it's a worthy member of the S tier. Next up is Igneous Hammer. The Igneous has absolutely juiced stats for a 120 RPM hand cannon. We're talking best in slot for range, stability, handling, and aim assist. If we take a look at the perk pool, there's no range finder, but do you even really need it with this much range? My favorite perk combo on Igneous is Elemental Capacitor with Killing Wind or Rapid Hit. You can pair it with a Void subclass to get an incredibly responsive 120 with excellent stability and range, or go with an Arc subclass to get a ton of handling. And I think this is a great point to finish off the discussion of 120s vs 140s in the current meta. In those intense peak shotting team engagements, the extra range and damage of the 120s is really decisive. After all, sometimes you don't even get to see your opponent's head and the option for that 2 crit 1 body kill is incredibly valuable. This is even more so in a team shotting scenario. Your movement with a hand cannon is incredibly important because you need to constantly monitor which angles you're open to and which you're safe from. This is a huge part of the movement skill gap in Destiny 2 and I hope this tier list can help motivate you to conquer it. I guess it's no surprise that I'll rank Igneous Hammer up in the A plus tier. It's really great and I feel bad for any of you who missed the chance to get it, hopefully it comes back pretty soon. Ikelos is yet another 180 RPM hand cannon in the energy slot. The only noteworthy thing for the Ikelos hand cannon are the Seraph rounds, making it one of the longest range 180s in the game. If you didn't know, Seraph rounds give you a phantom zoom benefit which makes your hand cannon perform in much longer ranges than usual. With full bore and a range masterwork, the Ikelos reaches out to 33 meters of effective range. Of course, compared to the mainstream 140s and 120s, that's not all that great, but it's the best you can get on a 180. Still, when capturing the background gameplay for the video, the iClose felt very underwhelming, even with Rampage. A lot of the other 180s on the list are simply better. So despite the impressive range, it's going in the D tier. Judgment is a former year 1 hand cannon which returned to us with the Prophecy Dungeon. I hate to break it to you, but it's just not all that good. Perk-wise, only the combo of slide shot or moving target and opening shot seems pretty decent, and none of the other perks do anything that special. I would steer clear of Adagio which converts the Judgment into a 120 RPM hand cannon with really bad range and it's just not worth using. 
If we take a look at the stats, Judgment has the worst in slot stability and handling and almost the worst reload speed. Unfortunately, having access to sights doesn't help it much either because the stat benefits are way smaller than what you get with barrels. If you dare try to max out the Judgment's range, you'll get a painfully bad range of 32 meters with only 30 stability and handling. That's just plain awful. It does get time payload to push out that range a little bit further, but again, I wouldn't want to extend the kill time anymore. Probably the one reason to use this thing is the combination of Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie, which is useful for grenade focus builds. Otherwise though, it's just a mediocre 140 and it's going in the B tier. Loud Lullaby is the only other 120 RPM hand cannon besides Kermel's Dagger with access to Kill Clip. This means you can 2 tap an opponent after getting just one kill. This takes one of the biggest weaknesses of a 120 RPM hand cannon, the bad damage output and long kill time, and turns it into one of its biggest strengths. The half a second time to kill with Kill Clip is absolutely disgusting and the damage output is very respectable too. The big problem though is that the Loud Lullaby has really bad stats. It has worse than slot range and stability. We can try to partially mitigate this with surplus, but then we have to make sure we're not using our abilities. There are a few nice perks, but whichever way you go, you're going to be wrestling with a bad base hand cannon. It's basically the same problem as Criminal's Dagger. I'm going to rank this one in the B tier. It's really fun for low stakes PvP 2 tapping, but overall just not that great. Lumina is a tricky one to rank. You see, at base as a hand cannon, it's kind of middle of the pack. It has decent stats, good handling, and high aim assist. But as a standalone hand cannon, nothing really stands out enough to rank it higher than the B tier. Lumina's whole gig is centered around those noble rounds. With the catalyst, getting a kill will summon two noble rounds which you can go and pick up. You can hip fire these over to your teammates which heals them and gives both of you a damage boost. And this damage boost is a big deal. As we've learned so far, damage boost plus hand cannon equals good and in Lumina's case it's really good. Unfortunately, Lumina asks you to get a kill to get that damage boost which means it's off limits until you get that initial pick. However, the warlock exotic boots of the assembler can actually generate you noble rounds just by standing in a rift which automatically buff your teammates with Noble Seekers. They also give you a humongous buff to Lumina's airborne accuracy, which helps with the mobility aspect of the hand cannon. These buffs are absolutely huge. It essentially means that you can spread a damage boost to your entire team just for standing in a rift. And if you use something like Ember of Benevolence on a Dawnblade 3.0 subclass, you'll get increased ability regeneration every time a teammate benefits from any of your buffs. It's going to be very easy to get your entire rift back even before your first one runs out, and then you'll be able to start the process of spreading a damage boost all over again. This is incredibly hard to deal with if you're playing against a team with a good Lumina user. Having to account for everyone on the enemy team getting a permanent healing and damage boost is really frustrating. Almost any primary weapon is going to get more consistency and more leniency, and some weapon types like SMGs will actually profit from a faster kill time. Lumina in a coordinated team environment is truly great, and I'm going to rank it in the A tier. Next up, we've got yet another exotic hand cannon, but this one's the only exotic option we have in the 180 RPM archetype. And I think it's time I introduced you to a new concept, the swappable. We call some pieces of gear in Destiny swappables because they have a very specific use case. Most of the time these swappables don't provide much value at all, but in the right situation they can be almost busted. For example, think about the Eternal Warrior Helmet on a Titan. You pop that bad boy on and suddenly you're almost unkillable in your super. For the rest of the game though, it's not giving you any benefits. This is why you swap to this helmet just before you get your super. Malfeasance kind of works in the same way. Its exotic perk makes every shot you land build towards an explosion on your target. Landing 5 shots in total makes them blow up for a lot of extra damage. This extra damage is actually enough to kill a roaming super. So if you need that massive burst of damage, Malfeasance is very effective. Think about Lorely Splendor on Titans or Warlocks and Rifts. Anything which gives your opponent a bunch of damage resistance or a bunch of healing will get exploded by Malfeasance. The big problem with Malfeasance though is the archetype. It's a bad dueling gun and there's really no way around it. It's one of the best primary weapons in the game to deal with supers and healing, but otherwise it's pretty weak. As a base hand cannon, it's going to go in the C tier. Its main redeeming benefit for general use is that the explosion makes the Malfeasance effective at really far ranges. But Malfeasance can be absolutely elite if you use it as a swappable against the correct playstyles. So if we're going to rank it purely as a swappable, it could go easily into the A- tier. Nation of Beasts is a great 140 RPM arc hand cannon that can pair really well with the new arc 3.0 subclasses. The main reason is that it features a combination of explosive payload and opening shot. I feel like this hand cannon is a bit underrated by the community. This is probably because it's a tough one to get the perfect roll with. You have to get it from the Last Wish raid and that's one of the only raids that doesn't have the new feature of modern raids where you can continue to buy extra rolls from spoils or even craft your perfect roll. It's not quite as good as Fatebringer which shares the explosive payload benefits and I'm going to have to rank it in the A- tier. Nature of the Beast has a similar name to our previous entry but trust me this one's much worse. It's a 180 RPM hand cannon, which is already a struggling archetype even after the recent buffs, and yet it has no damage perks on the table to let it easily 3-tap. 
that's just not acceptable on this archetype that already struggles against the 140s and 120s. The only saving grace for me is that it's the cleanest weapon model of the 180s which does make it a bit easier to see targets, but that's not enough to save it from going into the D tier. Okay, we've got another 180 coming up next, but this one does have a few tricks up its sleeve. Posterity has pretty good stats and some good perks. Rampage gives us a 3 tap potential after a kill, Rapid Hit helps with the stability and reload, and Killing Wind extends our range after a kill. It's also Arc so it can pair nicely with Arc 3.0. But it's still a 180 that struggles against the better archetypes for peak shooting, so we're going to put this one in the C tier. Pure Poetry is a new 120 RPM kinetic hand cannon from the Vanguard playlist. Pay attention because this one is really special. Stats wise, it doesn't have much to write home about, it's a middle of the pack hand cannon. Though in that massive 24 perk pool, there are some incredibly good rolls. And I've been reading a bit of lore throughout the tier list, but for this one, the name really stuck out to me, so... Let us analyze the perks. Perpetual motion is the best of the left. All the time it's gonna work. And the handling boost makes you quite deft. Stability is also good, in the right column as you see. There's quite a high likelihood that you're gonna get a perk you need. Elemental capacitor with the speed of arc that can cause a massacre, especially with limb and arc. Ew. Do you really bow swap? Why not use a normal gun? Are you ever gonna stop and let others have some fun? If a crack shot you choose to be, Focus Fury is what you seek. Spark and momentum for free reload and all the aim skill to offload. 96 per crit? That's a lot of pain per hit. Enough to two tap gyms if the result's a bit too slim. This gun is super strong. It's like Hawkmoon without the wings. And I don't think I'm going wrong if A plus is what we sing. 7th Seraph Officer Revolver is another 180 RPM hand cannon that basically looks like a brick. Sure, it gets multi-kill clip to 3-tap, but the left column just has no good perks. Its stats are almost the worst in every category, too. It makes Warmind Cells in PvE, which are awesome, but that doesn't help us at all in PvP. Sorry, this one's just no good, it's going into the D tier. Something new is our first 120 RPM Stasis hand cannon. Well, I guess that's something new. Is it any good, though? Well, I've praised 120s on this list, but I'm not a big fan of something new. If you want Headstone, why not just opt for IS Luna instead? And if you want Headstone from further away, then the new Purpose 340 RPM Pulse Rifle is the better choice. In terms of damage output at range, we don't have anything to push out something new's range that far. The only other worthwhile perk in the left slot is Wellspring, and I guess that could be paired with Demolitionist or Well-Rounded, but nothing's all that fascinating. You might be a fan of Tunnel Vision and Multi-Kill Clip, but both of those perks rely on getting a reload after a kill and the intrinsic perk Dream War can actually overflow the magazine after getting that kill to prevent you from reloading, which makes both of these perks useless. I'm just not a big fan of something new and I'm going to put it in the C tier. If you didn't farm for it, you really aren't missing out. Next up we've got Sturm. It's our only exotic 120 RPM hand cannon and it's a decent one. With the Catalyst, it gets some absolutely juice stats for a 120, making it an excellent hand cannon for newer players who otherwise don't have access to some god rolls on our legendary options. To be fair though, we can get much better rolls on legendary 120s if we're looking for some pure dueling quality. When paired with the legendary sidearm Drang, you can actually exploit its exotic perk to pocket some 2 taps. And in today's meta where special ammo is very hard to come by, it's very reasonable to use a double primary loadout. Drang also happens to be a fantastic sidearm which makes the requirement even easier to stomach. With or without Drang, it's just a good hand cannon to use these days. It feels nice to use overall, but each area of focus gets slightly beat out by other options on the table, so I'm going to rank this one in the A- tier. Sunshot is our last surviving 150 RPM hand cannon. That means it's time for another quick archetype for its archetype discussion. Is Sunshot better than the other 140s, and what's its role against the 120s? Well, Sunshot comes with really good handling and reload speed, and decent range and stability thanks to the catalyst. I wouldn't read too much into the stability though, because Sunshot's recoil is so unique and awkward at the same time. It really does take some getting used to. It also deals slightly less damage than a traditional 140 RPM hand cannon, but not enough to change the time to kill most of the time. Sunshot's main feature is that it has intrinsic explosive rounds, and as we've established throughout the tier list, explosive payload is really good, and Sunshot pairs those explosive bullets with a faster RPM. This makes Sunshot decent at outputting damage at range, but its true power is in the close to medium ranges. It plays very differently from other hand cannons, but in a good way. It enables a highly aggressive playstyle while working cover and quickly eliminating anyone who doesn't respect it. Plus, enemies that you kill will explode, which makes for some really interesting collateral kills. It's also one of the best pairings with the sniper rifle because it can hang so well up close. It's a great hand cannon and it's kind of a tough one to rank. It's at least in the A tier for sure, but I was on the fence if I should rank it in the A plus or A minus tiers. But Sunshot fans, you can rejoice because I'm going to put this one in the A plus tier. It's extremely good and it's worth learning that awkward recoil pattern. Survivor's Epitaph is another 180 RPM hand cannon. 
Since it's a playlist weapon, we've got 12 perks in each column once again, and in this case, there's quite a few nice combos to go after. In the left column, you've got Slide Shot to buff your range before a duel. And on the right side, you've got a bunch of damage perks to choose from. Kill Clip or Multi Kill Clip works great to land those three taps. Survivor's Epitaph is a very good 180 if you can deal with that bulkier model, and I'm going to be putting it in the C tier. Out of all the 180s that I tested on my list, it was my favorite, but it still does struggle against the 120s and 140s. Next up is the last word, the Cowboy Gun. Or the Controller Gun as some people call it. This hand cannon has been subject to a ridiculous amount of changes over the years, and now it's in a quite well-defined place in the meta. Most of the time when I hear people talking about the last word, they'll outline how the range nerf hit it really hard and how it's difficult to compete against the long range weapons. With special ammo becoming less and less abundant, double primary loadouts are looking much more attractive these days. The last word with its hipfire versatility and its incredibly fast optimal time to kill is an extremely good secondary weapon if you like to use it with a longer range energy weapon. The problem is that with special ammo becoming more scarce, it's harder to pull off the classic last word sniper pairing these days. And once you're out of special ammo, your performance at mid-range is nearly zero compared to other hand cannons. It also still favors controller players pretty strongly. If you're on mouse and keyboard and you miss your first shot, the duel is almost already lost. The controller does feel sticky enough to recover from a miss or two and still benefit from that really fast time to kill. So once again, we're going to split this ranking based on input device. For mouse and keyboard, the last word's going to drop down to the B tier, but on controller, it's still sticky enough in close ranges to warrant an A plus ranking. Next up, we've got the community favorite 140 RPM Void Hand Cannon, the Palindrome. There's a good reason people like this one so much. You can get it in its Adept variant to roll with Rangefinder and an incredible mix of stats. In its Adept form with an Adept Range mod, it's actually the longest range 140 RPM Hand Cannon in Destiny 2. With Killing Wind in the left slot, you can extend this range even further to absolutely ridiculous distances. In terms of its other stats, the Palindrome is an absolute monster. Let me draw your attention to that high airborne effectiveness stat. I haven't mentioned it that much in the video, but most hand cannons hover somewhere around the 10 to 15 mark without a Nicarus grip mod. Palindrome is a big exception though, and it starts off with 21 airborne effectiveness. Hand cannons benefit a lot from fast and unpredictable gameplay, so the higher airborne set is felt very strongly. It opens up the entire third dimension to you, and compared with many other hand cannons in the air, the Palindrome is way ahead of the competition. It's easy to use, it's consistent, and it outputs big damage from really far away. All qualities of an amazing hand cannon. I feel really sorry for those of you who have never gotten a good roll in this thing. It's still my favorite hand cannon in the game, and I'm going to rank Palindrome all the way up in the top spot. Get it? Top spot. That's a Palindrome. The Steady Hand is an Iron Banner 120 RPM hand cannon which you can't get anymore. It's a pretty good one, but if you don't have it, you're really not missing out all that much. It has a good range stat, I'll give it that, but the other stats are just okay or pretty bad, and the sights really don't help it either. Being an Iron Banner weapon, the Steady Hand has access to Iron Banner specific perks, and in particular I'm drawn over to Iron Grip. This will give you plus 20 stability in return for completely destroying your reload speed. Just look at how slow this thing is now. You could pair Iron Grip and Slide Shot together to give you even more stability and range every time you slide. It's also going to bypass that reload penalty so Iron Grip won't even be a trade-off. Alternatively, you could also think about moving target for even more aim assist. And speaking of aim assist, I would avoid Iron Gaze. That range penalty is absolutely not worth it. It directly goes against what makes a hand cannon any good. My personal favorite way to use this thing though is with Swashbuckler and some throwing knives. I've earned a lot of 2 taps by getting a knife kill and then going on a rampage to keep that perk stacked up 5 times. I'm going to rank this one in the A- tier. I think the other A plus tier 120s are just a bit better overall. Next up we've got Thorn, one of the most unique weapons in Destiny history. Every time you tag your opponent, you're going to be delaying their health regeneration and snuffing out their hope of returning to the duel. The burn damage also helps Thorn with its damage output. The problem with Thorn though is that your opponent can easily counter it. With Solar 3.0, we've got abundant access to healing, making the tick damage of Thorn nearly worthless. Also, any Warlock can just pop a healing rift, which immediately neutralizes the benefits of the tick damage. Thorn has really bad range, so you need to get pretty close to your opponent to duel them, 29 meters to be exact. For reference, a god roll on the Shara's Wrath, which is a highly lethal submachine gun, has damage drop off just 1 meter earlier at 28 meters. This is pretty bad news for Thorn. It's a hand cannon, and we've established that it loses the TTK duel against many other weapon types. It also struggles from the fact that many PvP players are running around with higher resilience these days, which prevents the potential 2-tap or even the 2-head 1-body situation from that poison burn damage. It's a really fun weapon to use, and it's capable of some fun streaks since the orbs that you generate also partially reload the gun, but in today's meta there are just so many better hand cannons out there, especially since this one takes up the exotic slot. I really struggled to rank this one, and I even made a Twitter poll to help me figure it out. I wanted to put this thing in the A tier somewhere, but I feel the poor range stat really holds it back. 
and there are so many other ways to counter the burn damage these days, so I'm going to put it in the B tier. True Prophecy is yet another hand cannon which shares the old model of the better devils. If you take a look at the perk pool, you should get a sense of deja vu. I'm going to recommend Rangefinder with either Elemental Capacitor or Explosive Payload. The big problem though is, oof, look at that 12 stability on a max range roll. Unfortunately, the True Prophecy pairs really high range with way worse stats, making it strictly inferior to something like the Bottom Dollar or the Igneous Hammer. It's a pretty solid 120, but no matter how you build it, it just falls short of the cream of the crop options, so we're going to put this one in the A- tier. We've got three hand cannons left, and next up is the Volpecula. I think we can cross this one off the list pretty quickly. It's our only stasis 180 RPM hand cannon, so it does get headstone, but again, why not just use the Ice Luna? I guess multi-kill clip and killing wind or tunnel vision can be pretty decent, but at that point, you can just go get yourself a survivor's epitaph for the real deal. I really don't like the Volpecula, and I think there's just so many better options out there, so if you didn't get one, you really aren't missing out. I'm going to rank this one in the D tier. Ah yes, Waking Vigil. I alluded to the ranking of this one earlier in the tier list, so you might get a bad feeling about this one. Oh, how the heroes of before have fallen. It used to be one of the best 150 RPM hand cannons before Beyond Light. Nowadays though, it's just a shell of its former self. It has a really nice perk pool, but its base stats are so unbelievably bad that it's just not worth using. If you want an ARC 140 RPM hand cannon, just go with Crisis Inverted or the Cantata. Definitely stay away from Waking Vigil these days, it's very bad. I'm going to put this one in the C tier. Zauli's Bane is our newest hand cannon from the King's Fall Raid. It's a solar 140 RPM hand cannon and definitely feels more built for PvE. Let me explain why. First of all, can we take a moment to appreciate, or I guess not appreciate, the aesthetics of the hand cannon? Remember how I said that 180s kick up and cover your opponent's model? Well, this kind of does the same thing. While testing this thing, I found it nearly impossible to see what I was shooting at and that really was the turnoff. If you take a look at the stats, they're not bad, but you'd expect better from an adept hand cannon. If you max out the range and compare it to a Fatebringer, it has about 5 points less in every major stat category. There are a lot of interesting perk combos for PvE, but this is a PvP tier list. On paper, this isn't a bad hand cannon by any means, but I think we've got much better choices on the tier list, and the biggest problem is how tough it is to see your target when you're using it. So despite the decent stats and perks, this one's going in the B tier. This took an insane number of hours to put together, so if you liked it, please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. We have a lot more tier lists like this one coming your way soon. Up next, check out my video ranking Destiny SMGs for PvP. It's the one on screen now and in the description.